Hubble's law is the name for the observation in physical cosmology that objects observed in deep space or more are found to have a Doppler shift interpretable as relative velocity away from Earth. This Doppler shift measured velocity of various galaxies receding from the Earth is approximately proportional to their distance from the Earth for galaxies up to a few hundred megaparsecs away. Hubble's law is considered the first observational basis for the expansion of the universe and today serves as one of the pieces of evidence most often cited in support of the Big Bang model. The motion of astronomical objects due solely to this expansion is known as the Hubble flow. Although widely attributed to Edwin Hubble, the law was first derived from the general relativity equations by Georges Lemaitre in a 1927 article where he proposed the expansion of the universe and suggested an estimated value of the rate of expansion, now called the Hubble constant. Two years later Edwin Hubble confirmed the existence of that law and determined a more accurate value for the constant that now bears his name. Hubble inferred the recession velocity of the objects from their redshifts, many of which were earlier measured and related to velocity by Vesta Slipher in 1917. The law is often expressed by the equation V equals HOD, with H0 the constant of proportionality between the proper distance d to a galaxy and its velocity v. The SI unit of H0 is S minus 1 but it is most frequently quoted in MPC, thus giving the speed in kilometer per second of a galaxy 1 megaparsec away. The reciprocal of H0 is the Hubble time. Observed values Discovery. A decade before Hubble made his observations, a number of physicists and mathematicians had established a consistent theory of the relationship between space and time by using Einstein's field, equations of general relativity. Applying the most general principles to the nature of the universe yielded a dynamic solution that conflicted with the then prevailing notion of a static universe. FLRW equations in 1922, Alexander Friedman derived his Friedman equations from Einstein's field equations, showing that the universe might expand at a rate calculable by the equations. The parameter used by Friedman is known today as the scale factor which can be considered as a scale invariant form of the proportionality constant of Hubble's law. Georges Lemaitre independently found a similar solution in 1927. The Friedman equations are derived by inserting the metric for a homogeneous and isotropic universe into Einstein's field equations for a fluid with a given density and pressure. This idea of an expanding space-time would eventually lead to the Big Bang and steady-state theories of cosmology. Lemaitre's equation in 1927, two years before Hubble published his own article. The Belgian priest and astronomer Georges Lemaitre was the first to publish research deriving what is now known as Hubble's law. Unfortunately, for reasons unknown, all discussions of radial velocities and distances were omitted. It is speculated that these emissions were deliberate. According to the Canadian astronomer Sidney van den Berg, the 1927 discovery of the expansion of the universe by Lemaitre was published in French in a low-impact journal. In the 1931 high-impact English translation of this article a critical equation was changed by omitting reference to what is now known as the Hubble constant. That the section of the text of this paper dealing with the expansion of the universe was also deleted from that English translation suggests a deliberate omission by the unknown translator shape of the universe before the advent of modern cosmology. There was considerable talk about the size and shape of the universe. In 1920, the famous Shapley-Curtis debate took place between Harlow Shapley and Heber D. Curtis over this issue. Shapley argued for a small universe the size of the Milky Way galaxy and Curtis argued that the universe was much larger. The issue was resolved in the coming decade with Herbal's improved observations. 
So five variable stars outside of the Milky Way Edwin Hubble did most of his professional astronomical observing work at Mount Wilson Observatory, home to the world's most powerful telescope at the time. His observations of sapphite variable stars in spiral nebulae enabled him to calculate the distances to these objects. Surprisingly, these objects were discovered to be at distances which placed them well outside the Milky Way. They continued to be called nebulae, and it was only gradually that the term galaxies took over. Combining redshifts with distance measurements the parameters that appear in Hubble's law, velocities and distances, are not directly measured. In reality we determine, say, a supernova brightness, which provides information about its distance, and the redshift z equals increment lambda, lambda of its spectrum of radiation. Hubble correlated brightness and parameter z. Combining his measurements of galaxy distances with Vesta Slipher and Milton Hugh Mason's measurements of the redshifts associated with the galaxies, Hubble discovered a rough proportionality between redshift of an object and its distance. Though there was considerable scatter, Hubble was able to plot a trend line from the 46 galaxies he studied and obtain a value for the Hubble constant of 500 km per second MPC. At the time of discovery and development of Hubble's law, it was acceptable to explain redshift phenomenon as a Doppler shift in the context of special relativity, and use the Doppler formula to associate redshift z with velocity. Today, the velocity-distance relationship of Hubble's law is viewed as a theoretical result with velocity to be connected with observed redshift not by the Doppler effect, but by a cosmological model relating recessional velocity to the expansion of the universe. Even for small z the velocity entering the Hubble law is no longer interpreted as a Doppler effect. Although at small z the velocity redshift relation for both interpretations is the same, Hubble diagram Hubble's law can be easily depicted in a Hubble diagram in which the velocity of an object is plotted with respect to its distance. From the observer, a straight line of positive slope on this diagram is the visual depiction of Hubble's law. Cosmological constant abandoned after Hubble's discovery was published, Albert Einstein abandoned his work on the cosmological constant, which he had designed to modify his equations of general relativity, to allow them to produce a static solution which, in their simplest form, model either an expanding or contracting universe. After Hubble's discovery that the universe was, in fact, expanding, Einstein called his faulty assumption that the universe is static his biggest mistake. On its own, general relativity could predict the expansion of the universe, which could be experimentally observed and compared to his theoretical calculations using particular solutions of the equations he had originally formulated. In 1931, Einstein made a trip to Mount Wilson to thank Hubble for providing the observational basis for modern cosmology. The cosmological constant has regained attention in recent decades as a hypothesis for dark energy interpretation. The discovery of the linear relationship between redshift and distance, coupled with a supposed linear relation between recessional velocity and redshift, yields a straightforward mathematical expression for Hubble's law as follows. Whereas the recessional velocity, typically expressed in kilometer per second, h0 is Hubble's constant and corresponds to the value of in the Friedman equations taken at the time of observation denoted by the subscript 0. This value is the same throughout the universe for a given comoving time, is the proper distance from the galaxy to the observer, measured in megaparsecs, in the three space defined by given cosmological time. Hubble's law is considered a fundamental relation between recessional velocity and distance. However, the relation between recessional velocity and redshift depends on the cosmological model adopted, and is not established except for small redshifts. For distances d larger than the radius of the Hubble sphere RHS, objects recede at a rate faster than the speed of light. 
since the Herbal constant is a constant only in space, not in time. The radius of the Hubble sphere may increase or decrease over various time intervals. The subscript 0 indicates the value of the Hubble constant today. Current evidence suggests that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, meaning that, for any given galaxy, the recession velocity dd, dt is increasing over time as the galaxy moves to greater and greater distances. However, the Herbal parameter is actually thought to be decreasing with time, meaning that if we were to look at some fixed distance d and watch a series of different galaxies pass that distance, later galaxies would pass that distance at a smaller velocity than earlier ones. Redshift velocity and recessional velocity Redshift can be measured by determining the wavelength of a known transition, such as hydrogen alpha lines for distant quasars, and finding the fractional shift compared to a stationary reference. Thus redshift is a quantity unambiguous for experimental observation. The relation of redshift to recessional velocity is another matter. For an extensive discussion, see Harrison. Redshift velocity The redshift Z is often described as a redshift velocity, which is the recessional velocity that would produce the same redshift if it were caused by a linear Doppler effect. This redshift velocity can easily exceed the speed of light. In other words, to determine the redshift velocity VRS, the relation, is used. That is, there is no fundamental difference between redshift velocity and redshift. They are rigidly proportional, and not related by any theoretical reasoning. The motivation behind the redshift velocity terminology is that the redshift velocity agrees with the velocity from a low-velocity simplification of the so-called Fizeau-Doppler formula here. Lambda O, lambda E are the observed and emitted wavelengths respectively. The redshift velocity VRS is not so simply related to real velocity at larger velocities, however, and this terminology leads to confusion if interpreted as a real velocity. Next, the connection between redshift or redshift velocity and recessional velocity is discussed. This discussion is based on Satori. Recessional velocity, suppose R is called the scale factor of the universe and increases as the universe expands in a manner that depends upon the cosmological model selected. Its meaning is that all measured proper distances d between co-moving points increase proportionally to r. In other words, where t0 is some reference time, if light is emitted from a galaxy at time t and received by us at t0, it is redshifted due to the expansion of space, and this redshift z is simply Suppose a galaxy is at distance d, and this distance changes with time at a rate dtd. We call this rate of recession a recession velocity vr. We now define the Hubble constant as in discover the Hubble law. From this perspective, Hubble's law is a fundamental relation between the recessional velocity contributed by the expansion of space and the distance to an object, the Connection between redshift and distance is a crutch used to connect Hubble's law with observations. This law can be related to redshift z approximately by making a Taylor series expansion. If the distance is not too large, all other complications of the model become small corrections and the time interval is simply the distance divided by the speed of light. Or according to this approach, the relation C said equals VR is an approximation valid at low redshifts, to be replaced by a relation at large redshifts that is model dependent. C velocity redshift figure. Observability of parameters strictly speaking, neither V nor D in the formula are directly observable, because they are properties now of a galaxy. Whereas our observations refer to the galaxy in the past, at the time that the light we currently see left it. For relatively nearby galaxies, V and D will not have changed much, and V can be estimated using the formula where C is the speed of light. This gives the empirical relation found by Hubble. For distant galaxies, V cannot be calculated from Z without specifying a detailed model for how H changes with time. 
The redshift is not even directly related to the recession velocity at the time the light set out, but it does have a simple interpretation, is the factor by which the universe has expanded while the photon was traveling towards the observer. Expansion velocity versus relative velocity and using Hubble's law to determine distances. Only the velocity due to the expansion of the universe can be used. Since gravitationally interacting galaxies move relative to each other independent of the expansion of the universe, these relative velocities, called peculiar velocities, need to be accounted for in the application of Hubble's law. The finger of God effect is one result of this phenomenon. In systems that are gravitationally bound, such as galaxies or our planetary system, the expansion of space is a much weaker effect than the attractive force of gravity. Idealized Hubble's law The mathematical derivation of an idealized Hubble's law for a uniformly expanding universe is a fairly elementary theorem of geometry and three-dimensional Cartesian, Newtonian and coordinate space, which, considered as a metric space, is entirely homogeneous and isotropic. Simply stated the theorem is this. Any two points which are moving their way from the origin, each along straight lines and with speed proportional to distance from the origin, will be moving away from each other with a speed proportional to their distance apart. In fact this applies to non-Cartesian spaces as long as they are locally homogeneous and isotropic, specifically to the negatively and positively curved spaces frequently considered as cosmological models. An observation stemming from this theorem is that seeing objects recede from us on Earth is not an indication that Earth is near to a center from which the expansion is occurring, but rather that every observer in an expanding universe will see objects receding from them. Ultimate fate and age of the universe The value of the Hubble parameter changes over time, either increasing or decreasing depending on the value of the so-called deceleration parameter, which is defined by an A-universe with a deceleration parameter equal to zero. It follows that H equals 1, T, where T is the time since the Big Bang, a non-zero. Time-dependent value of simply requires integration of the Friedman equations backwards from the present time to the time when the comoving horizon size was zero. It was long thought that Q was positive, indicating that the expansion is slowing down due to gravitational attraction. This would imply an age of the universe less than 1, H. For instance, a value for Q of 1 half would give the age of the universe as 2. The discovery in 1998 that Q is apparently negative means that the universe could actually be older than 1 h. However, estimates of the age of the universe are very close to 1 h. Olber's paradox The expansion of space summarized by the Big Bang interpretation of Hubble's law is relevant to the old conundrum known as Olber's paradox. If the universe were infinite, static, and filled with a uniform distribution of stars, then every line of sight in the sky would end on a star, and the sky would be as bright as the surface of a star. However, the night sky is largely dark. Since the 17th century, astronomers and other thinkers have proposed many possible ways to resolve this paradox but the currently accepted resolution depends in part on the Big Bang theory and in part on the Hubble expansion. In a universe that exists for a finite amount of time, only the light of a finite number of stars has had a chance to reach us yet and the paradox is resolved. Additionally, in an expanding universe, distant objects recede from us, which causes the light emanating from them to be redshifted and diminished in brightness. Dimensionless Hubble parameter instead of working with Hubble's constant, a common practice is to introduce the dimensionless Hubble parameter, usually denoted by H, and to write the Hubble's parameter H0 as H times 100 km s minus 1 mpc minus 1. All the uncertainty relative of the value of H0 being then relegated on H. If a subscript is presented after H, it refers to the value of H used in that text's preceding calculation and is equal to H0, 100. 
currently h equals 0.678, which can be represented as h 0.678. This should not be confused with the dimensionless value of Herbal's constant, usually expressed in terms of Planck units, with current value of h0 times tp equals 1.18 times 10 minus 61.